Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna and Dandavats to all the devotees there at Iskon Bergen. Please accept my humble obeisances. Vancha Kalpataru Bhayascha Kripa Sindhvevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namu Namaha Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Chai Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai Apne Apne Gurudev Ki Chai Shri Shiradha Damudhar Bhagavan Ki Chai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Chai Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Chai Shri Shigoni Thai Ki Chai Tulsi Maharani Ki Chai Giri Govardhan Ki Chai Lakshmi Nishinga Dev Bhagavan Ki Chai Pilat Maharaj Ki Chai Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai so I'm happy to be uh, back again to your Sangha after a long time. Happy to see you all. And as Prabhuji just uh, said that today we have a very, very interesting topic. So I'm going to start uh, by taking up a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 32, verse number 42. So, if you can, you can put it on the screen or I will just recite and you can hear. Canto 3, Chapter 32, Verse Number 42 Bahir Jata Viragaya Santa Chittaya Diyatam Nirmat Saraya Suchaya Yashyaham Priyasham Priyaham Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai This instruction should be imparted by the spiritual master to persons who have taken the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be more dear than anything, who are not envious of anyone, who are perfectly cleansed and who have developed detachment for that which is outside the purview of Krishna Consciousness. In the beginning, no one can be elevated to the highest stage of devotional service. Here, bhakta means one who does not hesitate to accept the reformatory process for becoming a bhakta. In order to become a devotee of the Lord, one has to accept a spiritual master and inquire from him about how to progress in devotional service. To serve a devotee, to chant the holy name accordingly to a certain counting method, to worship the deity and to hear Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita from a realized person and to live in a sacred place where devotional service is not disturbed are the first out of 64 devotional activities for making progress in devotional service. One who has accepted these five chief activities is called a devotee. One must be prepared to offer the necessary respect and honor to the spiritual master. He should not be unnecessarily envious of his god brothers. Rather, if a god brother is more enlightened and advanced in Krishna consciousness, one should accept him as almost equal to the spiritual master, and one should be happy to see such god brothers advance in Krishna consciousness. A devotee should always be very kind to the general public in instructing Krishna consciousness because because that is the only solution for getting out of the clutches of Maya. That is real humanitarian work, for it is a way to show mercy to other people who need it very badly. The word Shushrusha Bhirataya indicates a person who faithfully engages in serving the spiritual master. One should give personal service and all kinds of comforts to the spiritual master. A devotee who does so is also a bona fide candidate for taking this instruction. The word Bahir Jatavairagya means a person who has developed detachment from external and internal material propensities. Not only is he detached from activities which are not connected to Krishna consciousness, but he should be internally averse to the material way of life. Such a person must be non-envious and should think of the welfare of all living entities, not only of human beings, but living entities other than human beings. The word suchaya means one who is clean, both externally and internally. To become actually clean externally and internally, one should chant the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna or Vishnu constantly. The word Diyatam means that knowledge of Krishna consciousness should be offered by the spiritual master. The spiritual master must not accept a disciple who is not qualified. He should not be professional and should not accept disciples for monetary gains. The bona fide spiritual master must see the bona fide qualities of person whom he is going to initiate. An unworthy person should not be 
initiated. The spiritual master should train his disciple in such a way so that in the future only the Supreme Personality of Godhead will be the dearmost goal of his life. In these two verses, the qualities of a devotee are fully explained. One who has actually developed all the qualities listed in these verses is already elevated to the post of a devotee. If one who has not developed all this quality, he still has to fulfill these conditions in order to become a perfect devotee om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya narayanam namaskrityan naran chaiva narottamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayo mudire nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavate uttama shloke भक्तिर भवती नैश्चिकी श्रीमद्भागवत की जय ओम अज्ञातिरांध से ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुरन्मील येना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम शिल प्रौपाद की जय सो वेरी वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड्स दिस इज फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो थ्री कॉन्वर्जेशन बिट्वीन लॉर्ड कपिला एंड हिस् मदर देवहूति So we see that in the preceding chapters, the Lord is explaining the signs of pure devotional service, and as he comes down to the culmination, he makes a very, very important point about who is qualified to understand the uh, spiritual process or the signs of devotional service. And I was thinking, as I was reading this verse, that all of us, as con devotees, certain things are very clear. We know what's. we hearing regularly and okay we know the goal of our life is to go back to krishna and we have no confusion about that and we are working in that direction so what way we are working in that direction is as uh, said in the purport of this shloka where we are chanting we are reading we are associating with devotees we are taking krishna prasad so we are doing all that five important things you know bhagavat shravan naam kirtan uh, vigraha seva dham va everything we are doing but then there are two things or two factors which are actually um, disturbing or which are actually corrupting our system you know just like a computer has an os an operating system our operating system uh, which we are using to go back to goloka or to to carry forward our devotional practices is is affected by two virus so one virus is desire and one virus is envy envy now desire and envy so today we are not going to talk about desire because it's a big class in itself but today we'll focus on the second virus which is the envy so this is something like you know if you have if you have a nice pot and you're trying working very hard very hard to fill it with nectar but but you don't know you're not aware that the pot has holes then it's a disaster you working so hard to fill it with nectar but because it has holes all the nectar is getting drained away and this is a story of all of our lives we are all working hard we 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 do our morning sadhana we do our chanting we do our reading we taking association of devotees we are saying no to maya we saying yes to krishna conscious activities we are doing that which is favorable in krishna's service which we trying to leave that which is unfavorable we are just doing everything possible but still the required result is not coming up because the problem is there are holes in the pot in which we are trying to get the nectar so of course we do experience um uh, some pleasure or okay i i'm little better than what i was 10 years back but that's that's very little effect of what is just lying in the pot after leakage so what we're going to try and do today is to just find out where is that hole and how do you repair it so that whatever hard work that we are putting in and that nectar and taste of krishna consciousness uh, it can be retained in our hearts see we we are associating with devotees but what disturbs us is the envy we are chanting but we don't get taste because envy whatever we are doing even when we try to read scriptures when we try to understand scriptures when we try to live what we are reading what is causing an obstacle is envy so we see in every aspect of our devotional life something that is corrupting the whole process is envy so if you see this um, 
verse, just read the verses before this, starting from 39, 40, 41, 42. In all the verses, Lord Kapila is talking about many other things also. He'll generally say that uh, if somebody is not respectful to spiritual master, then they should not get this instruction. If somebody is too much attached to family life, they should not get this instruction. If somebody is not friendly to all living entities, they should not get this instruction. Yeah, he will mention so many qualities. But if you keenly observe, in every verse, he will mention about non-enviousness. In, in, in the verse 9, 13, 39, he's saying this, one should be non-envious. In 40, he'll say non-envious. 41, he says non-envious. 42, he says non-envious. And I thought, see, this is something special. Why will, it, why will the Supreme Personality of God it go on repeating something? I mean, did he forget that he already told about that in the previous verse? Or, or is it for, what, what is the purpose? Something which has been repeated continuously means it's it's of big significance. We see even the Vaishnava Acharya bhajans and we see in different verses, sometimes certain words, certain certain words are, are repeated just to create that emphasis, you know. There is this very famous stotra of uh, uh, Shankara Acharya, you know, Bhaja Govindam stotra. You know, he, in that he'll say, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam Bhaja Mudha Mate. Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam Bhaja Mudha Mate. Now, what's the point? I mean, we understand you are saying Bhaja Govindam. Why do you have to repeat three times? That means the emphasis. You see in the Brihad Naradiya Purana, when you know, they, they say this verse, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nami Vakevalam. So, is there is some problem with the tape record, some CD problem? No, you know, it's just that they repeat it. That means overemphasis. It's it's very important. When Kapil, Lord Kapil already mentioned about it in the previous verse, but he again keeps mentioning it. And you see till the end of the chapter, every verse will talk about don't be envious. That means it's it's really important that we shouldn't be envious. Sometimes, you know, devotees will say, I'm trying to read Bhagavatam, but I can't understand. Very simple. Why don't we understand? Okay, is the language problem? You can't understand English? Or you do it in Hindi? No, I don't know Hindi. Okay, then you go it in Telugu. Oh, no, not Telugu, Tamil. It's available in all language. What do you mean when you say you don't understand? Basically, what we mean by saying when we don't understand is we're not qualified. And what is that disqualification? What is that which is making us disqualify? Is this anarthas. When we are covered with those anarthas, when we are wearing the spectacles of anarthas, then we can't see, we can't hear, we can't understand things as they are to be understood. So that means it's very important. Unless and until we get rid of this anarthas, we won't be able to see and hear and understand things as they are. So we see various places in even in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna time and again, time and again mentions about this. You see in the ninth chapter, verse number one, Krishna says thus, Idam tute guhyatamam pravakshami anusuyave gnanam vignana sahitam yagnatva mokshase subhat. He says, this knowledge can be understood only by those persons who are non-envious. This rajaguhya, rajavidhyam, this confidential knowledge can be understood only those who are non-envious. Okay, so you see 9.1, he says that. You see Bhagavad Gita 4.3, he'll say, um, bhakto sime sakha cheti rahasyam hetad uttamam. Who can, who can understand their knowledge? He says, Sa evya maya te dia yoga protaka puratana. Arjun, I'm telling this to you because you're not envious of me, because you are my friend. So Krishna, Krishna drives that point home that who can understand? Only one who is Krishna's friend, who is not envious of Krishna and who is not envious of Krishna's devotees. You see, same thing he will say in... Um, Bhagavad Gita chapter 12, you see Bhagavad Gita chapter 12 from verse number 13 to verse number 20, Krishna is mentioning 36 qualities of, of devotee that he wants to see in his favorite devotee. So there he also uh, mentions, you know, that uh, the most important thing is non-enviousness, non-enviousness. So in, in you see chapter 12, Bhagavad Gita, starting from verse number 13. He'll keep mentioning Yomad Bhakta Same Priyaha. That kind of devotee I like very much who is non envious. Anapeksha, Suchir Daksha, Udasino. So many, so many qualities he'll go on saying. Advesha, Sarva Bhuta. And he starts with Advesha. Dvesha means enviousness. Advesha. And towards whom should we be non envious? 
he says advesta sarva bhutanam for everybody towards all living entities if you are non envious then i like you you my favorite devotee so you see 9.1 you see 4.3 you see 12.13 you see 16.19 in the bhagavad gita when krishna talks about the divine and the demonia qualities and krishna mentions that one who is envious that kind of person i throw him perpetually in the material ocean and he has to take birth in the lower species in the demonic species of life so he is so angry on those who are envious you see bhagavad gita 18.67 there again krishna mentions this confidential knowledge should not be imparted to those who are envious so so many times is mentioning and he is not saying this can't be imparted to somebody who is greedy don't impart this knowledge to somebody who is angry don't impart this knowledge to somebody who is lusty no time and again he'll say this knowledge is not for those who are envious that means this is like the king of anarthas king he is a boss of all the six anarthas that we that we know about kama krodha moha mada lobha mother's matsarya the matsarya the envy is the boss the boss of all these six thugs thick six thugs which rob us of our krishna consciousness which rob us of our bhakti the boss the boss of the mafia gang is envy turn to shrimad bhagavatam first canto first chapter verse number 2 the first thing that is mentioned is who can understand the bhagavata purana one who is nirmatsara naam satam nirmatsara naam satam means devotee nirmatsara naam means one who is non envious only they can understand the bhagavat purana so if we want to go ahead in our krishna conscious life we need to understand bhagavat we need to understand scriptures and in the beginning itself it is mentioned you won't understand <clears throat> if you are envious you won't understand so leave it keep the book aside first work on your enviousness and then you okay let's go to chaitanya charitamrita oh there are hundreds of quotes there and hundreds of incidents where we see that a devotee who is envious you know falls down in his krishna consciousness what 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 does shrinivas acharya say in the sada goswami ashtakam the first verse he mentions dheera dheera jana priya priya karo nirmat saro pujito first thing he says what is so beautiful about the six goswamis they are nirmat sara and that is why they are pujito they are worshipable they are lovable by whom everybody equally whether somebody is a ruffian or somebody is a pious brahmana or pious person everybody likes the sada goswamis why because they are nirmat sara they are not envious elsewhere shri prabhupad says in the purport in shrimad bhagavatam canto 9 chapter 11 text number 23 he he mentions that a sadhu a devotee is nirmat sara so he says he doesn't have the nature of a matsya of a fish the nature of the fish is when the fish is swimming around and the big fish sees the small fish the big fish is thinking better i eat the small fish because if i don't eat the fish this fish will become big and it may eat me later on so even before the fish becomes big let me eat it that's the nature of a fish but devotee doesn't have that nature he's nirmat sara he doesn't have a nature like fish so prabhupada is mentioning there that this enviousness being envious of other devotees it's an aparad it is a vaishnava parad and we do vaishnava parad hati mata this is the the moment we do vaishnava parad all the bhakti lata creepers that we are so sincerely trying to nourish you know with the water of our devotion our chanting our sadhana is trampled the moment we do vaishnava parad and being envious is a vaishnava parad when you are envious of a devotee it's a vaishnava parad so where is this enviousness coming from where does this envious come from how did how does how does it come well it's it it's there in us that is why we were thrown here in, in this material world we were envious of krishna in uh, goloka vrindavan we thought we should be the enjoyers and that is why we are here today in this material world 
we did not come to this material world because um you know we were not chanting properly or we didn't have any other issues the whole issue was we wanted to be the center of attraction and we were not able to tolerate why krishna should be the center of attraction and that is why today we are here in this material world you know sometimes when i when i mention this to the devotees na many of them they say it's not very convincing um how can somebody feel envious of krishna I don't think I feel envious of Krishna. Do you feel envious of Krishna? Do you feel envious of Krishna? No, uh, we don't feel envious of Krishna. Everybody would say, "No, I don't feel envious." But the thing is, now today, as of now, we can say that confidently we don't feel envious of Krishna because Krishna is in that marble. So we don't feel envious. The moment he actually walks out of that marble, he walks out of that brass, uh, uh, you know, brass uh, statue, we will start feeling envious of him. the moment he 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 walks out with a nice gorgeously dressed and a beautiful smile and effulgent face and if you will see everybody in the temple hall is running to talk to him and he is the center of attraction and then he is speaking with everybody just try to imagine now we are very comfortable because he is there you know and we are completely under you know we it's like he's like in our under our control we can do whatever we want to and he's not talking and he's not talking about us or he's not telling anybody you know he's simply a silent spectator of all the hypocritical drama that we are doing of being a great and pure devotee he's simply watching it silently and so we are very happy the moment he comes out and he opens his mouth and you know and tells people about what we are how we are and when we see our our friends and family and and husband and wife and children and they're all running to him and they almost all the time giving him more importance than giving to us definitely we're going to feel envious just that now we don't see him in flesh and blood so there is no enviousness but but when that actually happens we'll feel envious so enviousness is there enviousness is definitely there so we need to work on that we need to work on that enviousness we are, we are already working on so many other aspects of our krishna consciousness our chanting and our sadhana and our um bad habits and we we are working but then simultaneously one also needs to work on the the report card of our enviousness that means um, that means on regular intervals one needs to check okay i i was chanting eight rounds now i'm chanting 16 great i used to not offer food to krishna and now i'm offering okay i'm i'm improving so similarly one also needs to check the report card of uh, of the anarthas how it's going that means a regular introspection has to be done on proper intervals or oh, where am i going where do i stand and consciously make an effort in that direction because if the envy is out rest of the things will follow see i remember when i was a young college student you know in the in the in the indian cricket sachin tendulkar was very famous and the whole strategy of the players you know who play against the team india used to almost all the time um, revolve around sachin tendulkar the whole strategy used to be if sachin tendulkar is bowled out in a in, in couple of overs in the beginning then we're going to win the game but if he stays in the pitch then it's very difficult same thing the nb is sachin tendulkar of the maya you know if he is not bowled out then we lose the game but if 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 this nv is bowled out if nv is defeated then the rest of the anarthas are not batsmen they are bowlers they will simply make two runs and get out it will be very easy it will be peanuts to to take them out of the game but the the whole point is nv because the thing is nv is the king of anarthas and where does the king sit the king sits on the throne so nv sits on the throne of our heart but actually that place is supposed to be occupied by krishna so now because he is occupying it nv is occupying it there is no place for krishna so when we throw nv out then krishna comes and sits in our heart and moment krishna comes then rest of the anarthas he'll clean it himself because when he sits there he'll say oh my god this place is smelling and then he'll take him you know he'll sweep he'll sweep our whole heart but we need to first empty that place for him to sit which is occupied by envy so all right okay so what is envy we're talking about envy envy so how do you define envy like how do i know okay this is means envy so if we want a definition in single line envy means you are happy when somebody is unhappy 
and you are unhappy when somebody is happy. That's envy. Okay, I understand the definition of envy. Whom do we get envious of? That's the question. Well, we get envious of those who are in our reach, whom we can we can reach. Usually, we are not envious of devotees who are high above us in Krishna consciousness. We never feel envy because we almost all the time think that they are pure devotees and we want their blessings. We are not envious of them. And we are never envious of those who have come newly to Krishna consciousness because they think we are pure devotees and they are always looking up towards us and we want to show our compassion to them. So we have no problem, no enviousness for the juniors and no envious for the seniors whom we are actually envious of is devotees who are, are with us on the same frame, on the same frame. That is a problem. I, I often tell this in my classes that driving on a highway, it's easy. When you are driving on a highway, sometimes, you know, some cars are maybe 50 kilometers ahead of you and some cars are maybe 20 kilometers behind you. There is no clash. You can happily drive. But when you are driving in a traffic jam in India, it's difficult. You'd almost all the time you'll bump into somebody because everything is so close by. So that is the thing. In the highway, what's happening? The, the senior devotees are much ahead somewhere and we feel they're never, we, can't, we cannot reach them. So there is no enviousness. And those who are new, they're way behind us. So there is no enviousness. We know they'll never reach us. But those who are with us uh, almost all the time, you know, there will be something, you know, some kind of an enviousness will uh, crop in. Now, one thing may come up. Um, okay, the class is okay, but I don't think I'm envious of anybody. I, I, you said definition of envy is uh, feeling happy when somebody is unhappy, feeling uh, unhappy when somebody is happy. I don't feel like that. I don't feel unhappy when somebody is happy. I, that means I don't think I have enviousness. So I don't think I need to listen to this class because I'm not envious of anybody. So what we're going to do now is to administer a six-point test. A six-point test to check. Just check for ourselves in case if we have envy. We just check ourselves. So I'll, I'll read out all the six tests and then we can check for ourselves, all of us. And then, okay, do I have envy? Okay. There may, there may be so many ways to test it, but I'm just like giving you simple six tests with, you know, which we can immediately, without any laboratory intervention, we can know for ourselves that we have envy or we don't have envy. So test number one. If somebody is praised in front of you, how do you feel? Just check for yourself. I don't need answers. We are on Zoom and I won't be able to get your answers. So somebody is praised in front of you. Okay, he's not your senior. He's not your junior. He's, he's somebody whom you are, you know, on, on your level. And he's praised. So how do you feel? So you just check yourself. Okay, um, I feel very happy. Is it? I uh, know I don't feel very happy. I'm happy. Okay, now check again. Are you happy or you are... Um, not so happy, I'm okay if he gets praised, so what? Now check deeper, are you okay or you are like, uh, well, um, I don't think I liked it so much and then go more deeper. Is it that you didn't like it so much or you didn't like it? Check it, check it. The more you go deeper, you'll realize, well, actually I didn't like it that he got praised. But the superficially you may think, I oh, know I'm happy. I'm very happy. Everybody gets praised. What is that? But when you go deeper and you go deeper inside your heart and you'll see, well, no, actually I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it that he get praised, you know. See, you know, so, in, you know you'll, see, you'll see that in, in your day-to-day -day life, you know. Sometimes, you know, our devotee talks, our devotee gossips, you know, it'll be like, Hey, did you see that Mataji, you know, she cooks so well. My God, the morning Mangalarti sweets by her is like amazing. And you know, there'll be instantly so many responses. You know, and then somebody may come up, yeah, she cooks well. But you know what? She doesn't keep her house clean, you know. Have you seen how she keeps her house? My God, you know, other day I went, it was not clean. You know, you, you, these are these are iskan gossips, you know. Somebody will say, you know, that Prabhu sings so well, you know. He's like, he's like, oh my God, he's like Narad, he's like Gandharva, you know, the way he sings. Yeah, he sings nice. But do you know how much he eats? My God, you know, the other day I saw this much rice, you know. How much he eats, you know. 
we don't realize unconsciously we do that so we say no 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 i'm very happy he got praise hey, you're happy but then you'll always almost try to lace it with something and just make yourself feel happy that you know okay okay he may be great singer but he's not a great cook okay he she may be a great cook but she's not a she's not a good mother okay so we just he will just try to do that sometimes we'll do it verbally in front of everybody openly will they will do that or sometimes be very smart we won't do it openly but inside our heart we'll think that's all right what is there if she sings good but she's not a good mother you know i know how she behaves in i know how her children are her children they don't even chant they don't even come for aarti you know but she talks so many things we'll just try to manage in our heart you know, we, we, this, this is something we have to check for ourselves nobody can help us or do, do i feel that okay this is a test number 1 see you see in chaitanya charitamritam you know when um, uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu you know he um, he gives a hug to shankar pandit now shankar pandit is the younger brother of damodar pandit and chaitanya mahaprabhu and damodar pandit they both are like they, they grow up together they are like friends and then um, damodar pandit is standing there chaitanya mahaprabhu is like hugging his younger brother and chaitanya mahaprabhu says uh, damodar i like you but i like your younger brother a little more i like him more than you and damodar pandit he becomes so happy he said just because you said this today from today onwards i am his younger brother and he is my elder brother and he becomes genuinely happy so like if you see, if you read chaitanya charitamrita you know so many incidents you can see by the examples of devotees how they displayed their you know amazing qualities you know so much tolerance they had how non envious they were of each other so appreciative they were of each other so this way we can understand you know if i was in that position would i have been happy or would i have been feel like are i grew up with him and now lord says he likes my brother better there may be some kind of a feeling this is test number 1 we'll go to the test number 2 when others make a mistake okay they make some mistake so what do you feel about it do you feel very bad for them are poor fellow you know oh my god you know the, he made such a big mistake do you feel very bad about it or do you feel okay i don't feel very bad i feel bad okay and then go deeper and check um i don't i didn't feel bad at all you know he did the mistake so what is there or go more deeper and check or did you feel he deserves it he deserves it you know what he did he deserved that you know because or you will try to speak some philosophy no actually i'm not envious of him you know it was good for him what happened you know that will make him humble you know that's all otherwise i didn't he should be humble it was good for him he was making this mistake long time and now everybody came to know he's exposed i think it's good for him do you feel good about it like you just we need to check deeper when something's happening wrong to somebody what is your instant feeling do you have an empathy or you have sympathy or you are like um, i think he, i guess he deserves that you know what is your feeling we need to check deep inside or is there a kind of a um, a little pleasure or something like oh good what happened to him see i'll tell you when very beautiful past time um you know in the satyuga there was one very very pious king now this king had one day a beautiful desire in his heart he thought let me feed all the vaishnavas you know everybody in and around my kingdom so he said all right tomorrow i host a lunch for everybody so he called all his cooks from around the place okay come everybody come and cook as many varieties you can and i want to feed the brahmanas so they said yeah king that, that's all right but the only problem is we don't have that many arrangements inside the palace so maybe we need to make a makeshift kitchen you know outside in the open space because we have to cook for thousands and thousands of brahmanas so the king said all right great all the arrangements were done the cooking started hundreds of varieties were cooked all the brahmanas ate the prasadam but they all died so now the king could not understand what exactly happened so then they realize what had happened is when the cooking was going on there was a eagle which was flying with a dead snake now eagles and vultures and they eat snakes so he was just carrying a dead snake and flying over the makeshift kitchen which was in a open space 
Now this snake was dripping poison from its mouth. That poison went inside the dal which was being cooked and all the brahmanas died. Now the file went to Yamaraj. So the Yamadutas are asking Yamaraj, Sir, whom should we punish for this grave sin of killing so many brahmanas? So Yamaraj said, I am unable to decide. Why not you people make a suggestion? So one Yamaduta says, uh, Well, sir, I feel that uh, punishment should be uh, for the king because king is supposed to be uh, responsible. He should have made sure, you know, that the kitchen arrangements were proper, you know, and the brahmanas would not have died. Immediately the second servant said, No, 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 I don't think king is responsible. How, do, how will he know this is going to happen? He did his best. I think the eagle should be punished because why did the eagle do that? Then the third person said, how can eagle be punished? Eagle was simply eating its food and going away. How will it know that it's going to? It's, it's, after all, it's a, it's a bird, you know. How does it have that much sense? I think the snake should be punished because the poison came from the snake's mouth. The other duta said, how can the snake be punished? The snake was dead by that time. It doesn't even know that the poison is dripping from its mouth. So snake can't be punished, eagle can't be punished, king can't be punished. The other duta said, sir, I know who can be punished. I think um, the, the cook has to be punished because the cook supposed to be careful while he was cooking, you know, he's supposed to be careful what is happening. And the other duta said, how can the cook be punished? Maybe he was, you know, trying to get some salt or something. By that time, the poison must have fallen. You know, he, he has not seen. What can he done? It was an open kitchen. Now the Yamaraj file was kept on pending. He said, looks like... I don't get any solution for that. Keep the file pending. We'll talk about it later on. And after some time, suddenly one day Yamaraj comes to the office and he's like, I know whom to punish. Go and punish that one lady there in king's kingdom. So all the Yamadutas, they came running. Sir, we're very curious. How did you make your decision? What she has done? So then Yamaraj says, after many, many years, some other Brahmanas came to that kingdom so they were asking for a route, you know, how do I go to the king's palace? So this flower, you know, the lady who was selling flowers, they asked her, uh, should I take a right or a left? How do I go to the king's palace? And she uh, very mockingly and, you know, laughingly, she said, oh, you, you're planning to go to the king's palace? I hope he has not called you for lunch because last time he called for lunch, all the brahmanas died and she started laughing. I mean, she was just enjoying it, you know. And you know what? All of them died. You better be careful, you know. So now the Yamaduta said, but sir, what is her mistake, sir? She told the truth, na, sir. In fact, maybe she was helping the brahmanas by informing what has happened previously. So Yamarat said that that was not her attitude. She was laughing. And Yamarat said, made a very important point. He said, why does somebody commit a sin? You commit a sin because you want to enjoy. But, but what happened that day, the, 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 the dying of the brahmanas, the king was not happy. The cook was not happy. The eagle was not happy. The snake was not happy. But the sin committed, who became happy by the sin? This lady who is selling the flowers. So she will be punished because she is so happy about it. She's mocking about it. She's laughing about it. So somebody should derive pleasure now of the sin committed. She has derived pleasure. She will take the sin. When I heard this, I thought, oh my God. Sometimes we may apparently be very nice, never make any mistakes. But sometimes if we do mock others or just make fun of them or make fun of what happened to their lives, oh, their, their sins transferred to us. We have to be so very careful. So sometimes maybe we didn't do nothing, but whatever happened to that other person, we are unconsciously, subconsciously enjoying it. Uh, he deserves it. He should get it. He did that to me. Something like that, you know. What he, what he did previously, I think he deserves this. So this is test number two. Do you become happy when other person gets some punishment or he makes a mistake or he's publicly humiliated or whatever, whatever. You know, in a subtler way, I'm not saying like too grossly, but somewhere if you're feeling he deserves it, then you do have enviousness inside. So we spoke about test number one. We spoke about test number two. Now test number three. Um, do we feel, do we feel, I don't need to learn anything from anybody? If this feeling is there in our heart, that means we have enviousness. And we can check it. 
and we can and, and you can check it all the all the more when you are hearing bhagavatam class you know you're hearing some class from somebody check it you know almost all the time you'll have that feeling the moment they they they, they recite is past time or they or they speak some point which you already know you know you immediately have that um, that superiority feeling you know i know this story i heard many times i know this one i i read it in whatsapp long time back at this point i heard yesterday only that that feeling will be there you know you will not have that feeling like okay that's all right i heard it but it's it's nice to hear again so because in krishna consciousness whatever you hear nothing is going to be new everything is same what you speak today what you speak 10 years before what you will speak 10 years after it's all going to be same and nobody is going to speak something which is new everybody is simply speaking what they have heard from others or what they have heard from vaishnava acharyas what is there in prabhupad books what is there in the books of the acharyas you're not going to get something new out of the blue you're just repeating but what happens every time a devotee speaks it he is adding his bhava he is adding his bhakti he is adding his love and devotion in that katha that's all the difference see sometimes you know two three four different cooks they may be making the same curry the same vegetable with the same ingredients whatever is that paneer or tomatoes capsicum bell pepper whatever salt masala same thing but no two people will make it same somehow there will be some difference you know you even if you give the same ingredients to this cook and you give same ingredients to this cook both will make with the same ingredients but the taste will be different because everybody adds their own devotion they will add their own um, expertise so when we even if we hear the same katha or the same story or the same past time from the devotee what we are trying to take is the is the love and devotion of that devotee that comes when from that devotee's heart it gets sprinkled into our heart that's the whole motive behind hearing the katha so this is test number 3 check check do you feel that i don't need to learn anything from anybody i know everything that means we are envious okay test number 4 do we feel do we feel everybody should respect me all should respect me you know see when we were all new to iskon you know the, our feeling was you know I, I, i i'm just a servant you know oh my god everybody is so expert you know i am i'm a das all are my boss but then slowly unconsciously we didn't even realize from you know from das we become prabhu everybody starts calling us prabhu and uh, somewhere inside we like it and after some time if somebody doesn't call prabhu will feel bad you know how come you know he's calling me by my name you know no prabhu no nothing no etiquette no manners you want to be addressed as prabhu and after some time you don't realize you start becoming like mahaprabhu you know you think everybody should respect me you know I, and not only mahaprabhu you start getting the feeling of aham sarvasva prabhu everybody should respect me you know if i don't come to the temple how will how are they going to manage this program what will they do so slowly slowly that feeling arises so if that's happening to us oh we understand we are having that feeling of enviousness okay test number 5 do we have appreciation for everybody just check check ourselves or do i appreciate everybody when when we came newly into krishna consciousness we had appreciation for everybody just go back you know rewind those days when you newly walked first time into an iskon temple you must have had appreciation for everybody even for the devotee who is giving charnamrit how nice how humble na he was he was calling us with love and affection please take prasad and go please take charnamrit oh that prabhu is so nice that mata ji is so nice oh that prabhu gave such a wonderful class oh the pujari was doing puja so nicely or the deities were dressed so nicely you just rewind your days you had appreciation for everything right from the prasadam they gave you or the class you heard or the bhajan you heard the aarti you participated and check yourself now now for almost everything you have some you know you will find some fault ah uh, the deities are nice but they could have do it this way class was nice but it was too long prasad was nice but curd was missing that person was nice but you know that but and but and but. It, yeah so test number 5 we are envious it's clear it's done see when we actually came for the first time into iskon temple our our, our whole intention was 
I don't know anything. I just want to learn from them. I don't know. I want to learn. But do we still have that? Is a question mark. I somewhere down the line we changed from I want to learn to I want to teach. I want to teach how to do this properly. I can. I want to teach. You know, I I like this one line by um, His Grace Vaisesika Prabhu, and I all I have it. I have it written in my in my room also. Um, you know, he says this. He was tell, he was telling this in one one of his uh, classes in uh, Mayapur. So he was saying, um, you know, our whole intention should be, I am living to be corrected by others. I am living to be corrected by others. And he said, over a period of time, now the line changes for us, and we think I am living to correct others. Now it has become like that. My whole existence is just to correct others. If I don't correct, who will correct them? You know. So I I, I like that point very much. You know, and I I keep you know reminding him, my life is not for correcting others. My life is to correct myself. I want to be corrected. If somebody helps me, where am I going wrong? You know. See, you know, I'll tell you one very funny funny story. You know, in an apartment. you know there were there were some children who used to come regularly and play cricket now in india cricket is a very very popular game everywhere almost everywhere you know children will be playing that on the streets and here and there now the apartment people were in trouble because children play cricket the ball flies here and there sometimes breaks the window panes and they were you know getting so irritated so they were telling the children regularly children don't play here why don't you go and play in some playground don't play here but the children never listened now in that apartment on the third floor a new you know a new uh, uh, you know what he said tenant arrived he was a old man 60 years old so the neighbors were cautioning him sir you have you know you have come to this apartment let us uh, inform you these children play cricket whole day they'll not allow you to sleep they'll disturb you know the the the, the ball will come to your window break your glass you will be in mess this old man simply smiled he was very confident he said oh for me it's a small thing you know within 10 days i'll make sure that children don't play cricket here and they were like really we've been trying from months and he said yeah it's a challenge 10 days 10 days they'll not play cricket here anymore they said all right great let's see so next day evening he goes there goes down there and he's watching children play cricket and at the end of the game he calls all the children come here come here come here and all of them said yes uncle what can we do for you no i just want to let you know that when you play cricket here i feel so happy and they are surprised you know nobody feels happy everybody is you know all the time shouting on them so why do you feel happy he said you see i became old na now you people are young na when you play cricket i feel as if i am playing i feel so happy i can i request you children please play cricket here every day ah huh? don't miss because i i'm i'm enjoying seeing that and not only that wait i want to give you something and he takes out money you know so the children are like uncle what is this money for no no why not you all go and eat ice cream i feel so happy when i see you playing cricket you know i want to give you something so he gives 100 100 100 to all the kids and they are like oh, no no uncle we don't want are come on don't feel shy come on take it go and buy ice creams they were very happy next day he repeated the same thing at the end of the game he said come here come here come here i want to give you money go and get ice creams third day he did that fourth day he did that now the children become so used to you know every day they get a 100 rupee for playing cricket you know and they go and buy buy ice creams on the on the seventh day he said are i have you know i forgot to withdraw money from the bank um today i have only 50 rupees is it okay children are like oh come on uncle you know it's all right 100 50 what does it make difference 50 is also okay no problem you can give 50 after another day he said um i don't have 50 uh, can i give you 10 rupees is it okay and the children were like uncle Ten rupees. We can't get the ice cream. No, please give fifty at least. They said no. I don't have. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to give more than ten. And then an argument started. And they said no. You know, what will we do with ten rupees? At least give fifty. And he said I can't. And they said you have to. And he says I can't. And finally the children got so upset. They said, they said to the uncle, do you think we are cheap fellows who will play cricket just for ten rupees? That do you think that's our standard? go to hell we are not 
we're not playing cricket anymore in your apartment because you have insulted us. So we take your 10 rupees, go to hell. We're not playing cricket anymore. And, and he's literally begging, don't say that. Please don't say that. Don't leave. No, 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 no. Nothing to be said. Uh, we are not playing cricket anymore here. And they just left and they never came back. Now, all of them were so surprised. Now, what happened to the children? They were not playing cricket for 100 rupees. They were playing cricket because they liked the game. But over the period of time, they started thinking that they are playing cricket for money. And now because that money is not coming, they shouldn't play cricket. What happened? He just conditioned their mind. Same thing happens with us. When we first walk inside the temple, we didn't come to the temple, Iskand temple to correct anybody. We came that we want to get cured. I want to be a good devotee. I want to learn something. I have problem. I have issue. I want to learn. But over the period of time, we forgot what we came for. And now we think, I have to correct everybody. I need to do something to improve the standards of this temple. I need to make give sense to this person. I need to... We forgot what we came for, you know, and then we are lost. This is what happens to us. So check for yourself. This Is this happening to you? Yeah, that means enviousness is there. Okay, test number six, the final test. Do you see fault in others? Do you see fault in this devotees? Do you see fault in that devotees? You know, he has this problem. He has, you know, almost you know, the way we, we become conditioned over the period of time is like, we become like x-ray machines, you know, on the airport, you know, you have those x-ray machines in the airport, we become like that. No devotee can we see with love and affection. Every devotee that we see, immediately that person's fault pops up. He has this problem, she has this problem, he has that problem. So, like that, we see fault in others. You know, devotees also, they're of different kinds. Some devotees are guna ek darshi. Guna ek darshi. Whoever they see, they see only good things. Even if they're able to see the bad also, even if there are actually some bad qualities also, they can't see. They can only see the good qualities. Guna ek darshi. Some are dosh ek darshi. They'll only see faults in others. Even if there's so many good qualities, they'll see they're like those fly, you know. A honey bee goes to the flowers to suck, to suck the honey. But a fly will almost go to a litter, to the dustbin, you know. They're almost all the time attracted to the bad, you know. No, no, this devotee has this bad quality. This person has this problem, you know. Guna eka darshi, dosh eka darshi, guna dosha darshi. Guna dosha darshi is, they see the good, but they also see the bad. He has good qualities, but he has bad qualities. But then there are some very, very special creation of Brahma. They even see the good as bad. Even if somebody has good quality also, they'll see as bad. If somebody is going regularly to temple also, they'll see as a bad only. Why so much overacting? Huh? Till yesterday he was in the bar and he used to take non-veg and overacting. Bah, regularly going to temple. If somebody is you know, doing fasting on Ekadashi, fasting, huh? why all that fasting? What Prabhupada told? Take prasadam, do service. Okay Prabhuji, I'll do service and I'll take prasadam. You're taking prasadam? You're taking prasadam, ah. Is this ekadashi? So many varieties you are eating. Ekadashi, sagudana vada, kichudi, paneer. What is this, Baba? Do some fasting. Okay. You make a temple, they'll say, temple, ah. Bhakti Siddhanta Saswet Thakur said, sell the marble and distribute book. Why all this temple, temple? Why not you distribute books? If you're distributing books, they'll say, ah, it is okay, but you are distributing books and making, okay, but Lord is under asbestos sheet. What is the, you know, what is the point? You have to make a temple for Krishna. Okay. You chant uh, 64 rounds, they'll say, 64 rounds, ah. Prabhupada said 16 rounds and you do nice service, you know. What is this all, you know, 64 rounds? Finish your 16, go for preaching. You go for preaching and all, they'll say, what is this, you know. Prabhupada said, janma sartaka kari karo paro upakar. First you become devotee, what is all that preaching, preaching? You will be like, what am I supposed to do? What will... What will make this devotee happy, you don't know. Almost all the time there is a fault finding. I'm not talking about others. Even we, we do that. We do that. Almost all the time finding fault. So are we doing that? Are we seeing fault in others? Okay, that means we have enviousness. So like there, there, there's so many. You know, some people will say, um, I don't see fault. It's constructive criticism, Mataji. We just, I'm just like, you know, things can be done better. That's what I want to say. See, the thing is, I'll tell you one very interesting um, thing. You know, many years ago, in the city of uh, Shimla, 
there was a very famous painter and you know in shimla there's one very beautiful place one chok you know what you get four lane road junction you know people display what they <clears throat> what they have done and like an exhibition and in the evening people come and watch you know somebody displays a, a a painting somebody will display some nice art items so there was this one painter he was a new painter he just learned from his guru so he was very humble hearted so what he did he made a beautiful painting and then he put it there on the four lane junction and he put a note below he said if you find you know anything wrong with this painting you know some mistakes you know he kept a black pen there please mark it on the painting so that i will improve you know so that's about it and he went away next day morning when he came there there was no painting completely black marks completely black mark that means everybody felt that this should have been changed that should have been changed no painting was remaining completely black marks and this fellow was so you know disappointed he took the painting and told his guru see you know everything you know people uh, didn't appreciate i don't want to continue painting anymore i don't want to do anymore i i i'm i'm finished with my painting this then the guru said no no don't say that mm, make the painting again we'll go tomorrow i'll help you he said okay he made the painting again again they put it in the same place this time guru said keep some paints keep some brush and below they put a note uh in the note they said if you find you know that certain thing is not done properly uh, please go ahead and make changes here are the paints and here are the brush just make the change and next day morning when he arrived the painting was not even touched everybody said it's very nice huh very good because they want to make a comment they don't want to change they don't want to take that uh, you know and make an endeavor of you know actually trying to change something they just want to make a comment this is not correct that is not correct you correct it you correct it they don't want to help so then nobody made any changes to his painting this is our problem also we were ready to find fault with others but we don't want to do it proper said you can criticize if you can do better proper said you can criticize but you do it and show it don't just tell don't give advice just do it you do it and show this is how it is to be done this way it can be done better so okay we are done okay now we are convinced after the test six different tests yeah okay somewhere i have also some trace of envy in me so what is the solution what is the solution see the problem is if our envy was gross it would be it would have been easy to work on it the problem is our envy is subtle see in shrimad bhagavatam you see the past time where of daksha daksha and uh, and daksha and lord shiva daksha was very vocal about his envy very gross you know he says shiva is you know in in the crematorium grounds and shiva wears you know scanty clothes and shiva is almost all the time with his hoblins and you know shiva is like this shiva is like that he was very open and verbal about his envy which he had in his heart about lord shiva okay you see pondrik he was open about his envy for krishna he was wearing krishna's peacock feather and he was carrying a flute like krishna and he said i am krishna shishupal he was very vocal and open about his envy for krishna okay i'm envious of krishna krishna is like this krishna is like that you see in chaitanya charitamritam gopal chapal he was open about his envy towards shrivas thakur he was envious of shrivas thakur so what he did just to defame shrivas thakur he got all the ingredients which were used for durga puja and he went and put it in front of shrivas thakur's house and he was telling everybody look this shrivas is posing as a vaishnava but he's he worships you know durga devi or kali or whatever you know he he's he's not he's not a vaishnava so he was open about it if you if they are open about it you can do something about it but if there is a subtle enviousness inside you see if i have a wound in my finger and and, and blood is oozing out it's easy to deal with it i'll put a bandage i'll go to a doctor i'll put sofromycin i'm done but if you have a cancer somewhere inside and you don't even know about it and it keeps on increasing and you will know about it only when it is on stage 4 
then it's a problem. Then it's a problem. And that is how our envy is. Our envy is not open, you know, because we wear so many masks, people can't even realize. We have mask and mask and mask. And inside this envy is growing and growing like a termite, like a cancer. And by the time it's on stage four, you can't do anything anymore. Right? That is the problem with our envy. Even now, you know, just now, just now, when we're hearing this class, you know what will be happening in our mind? We'll be making a list of all those people who are envious of us. And then we'll be thinking in our mind, you know, when the class is uploaded in YouTube, I'll forward it to all those people because they need to know they are envious of me. But we won't be able, we won't be making a list of all those people whom we are envious of, you know. You know almost all the time we'll be thinking maybe, I just hope that devotee hears this class and I, I just hope she hears that class and she knows that she's envious of me. But we're not thinking about whom are we envious of, you know. That, that's a human nature. So now we are convinced, okay, this is what is envy. This is how we become envious of people and we are envious. So now what's the solution? Okay. So <clears throat> I've listed out a number of practical solutions that we can bring out to overcome envy or to at least subdue or control or minimize our envy. You know, Gopi Paranadhana Prabhu, he's no more uh, now in this world. He's, he's, he's gone back to join Krishna in his eternal pastimes. But he used to um, uh, make a very nice point, you know. He said, if you are envious of somebody, if we must be envious of somebody in our life, we can realize that. He said that that devotee whom you are envious of, may, make it a routine every day. As soon as you get up in the morning or before you sleep in the night, you know, keep one diary. And in that page, you write down that devotee's one good quality. So now you may say, but... I'm envious of him now. Nah, that's why I cannot even see good quality. No, you work on that. That that that's your exercise. Think and think and think. You know, if you can't think of any good quality, uh, one good quality is that he wears kanti. Wow, you know, he never removes kanti. Oh, he wears tilak. Oh, he has a beautiful smile. Oh, he takes prasadam nicely. So like that, you know, just whatever, whatever, whatever. And do that exercise for 30 days, 60 days, every single day. One good quality of that person, write down, write down, write down. And at the end of the month or two, you will be amazed. Oh my God, this devotee has so many good qualities, you know. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to do this. See, because, you know, he is a Nitya Siddha, so he knows in his ashram, which devotee is envious of whom. So what he used to do is, he used to make them do an exercise. Um, he, like, he used to have like, a, let's say it's like a public program. You know, like, not public, I mean, you mean, you mean to say, I mean to say like, a, you know, ashram, ishtagoshti, get together. And then on random, he will say, so Prabhu, can you get up and can you tell us something nice about Krishna Das? You know, whatever the devotee's name is. Can you tell us something nice about Krishna Das? And now everybody in the ashram knows that he doesn't like that Krishna Das. But now Guru Maharaj has asked him to say something. So he'll say, uh, what I like about Krishna Das, a Krishna Das, a Krishna Das is, he's Krishna's Das, you know. Yeah, oh, very nice, very good. That was a good quality. He's Krishna's Das. And then he'll say, you sit down. Now you get up. Can you tell something about, um, you know, him? Him, you know, Sham Das. And he's like, Sham Das, yeah, Sham Das, yeah, Sham Das is very good devotee. He has to because it's it's public now. Everybody is, you know, sitting there and Guru Maharaj is asking you to speak. And he used to make them do that exercise. And, you know, in, in doing it and doing it and doing it slowly, after some period of time, they really started appreciating each other. Oh, yeah, it's true. I never realized. Yeah, he cooks Sandesh very well. Oh, yeah, he sings very well. I never realized that. And then by doing that exercise, they got improved, you know. So you glorify that devotee. You glorify. Whom are you envious of? You glorify that devotee particularly publicly and privately. Inside your heart, if you're not having that, um, uh, that gut, guts to do it publicly, start privately first. Start writing in your diary his good qualities. And then when you have um, mustered enough courage, then start doing it publicly also. Just appreciate that devotee. Probably you, you're very nice. Probably you're like this. Just appreciate. And then you do that. And you do that. The envy goes away. Okay. Other thing is um, respecting whomever you are envious of, of or for that matter. Everybody, respect everybody, right? You see, I like this um, 
one beautiful bhajan by uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. You know, you must have heard that Guru Dev Kripa Bindu Dia. And in and in that in the, in the second stanza he says, Sakale sammanai karite sakati deho natha jatha jatha tabe to gai bo hari nama sukhe aparada ho behata guru dev kripa bindu diya karo e dase trinape ka dihina i like that second stanza where he says sakale sammana karite sakati sakale sammana not only guru ji not only guru dev we should have this shakti this strength sakale sammana i don't know what in the in the translation they may have limited it that give me the strength to respect you or see these vaishnav bhajans are you can take it whatever whatever way it helps you you know i mean i i don't mean you misinterpret them but i mean you just try to take it more deeper you know you can't limit it to sakale samman means all kinds of respects my dear gurudev i should offer to you you can also take it as sakale sammana please give me the shakti the strength to give respect to everybody that i come across in this world because if i give respect to everybody then what will happen sakale sammana karite sakati deho natha jata jata please give me that mercy you know please please bless me that i can respect everybody then what will happen tabe to gai bo oh then i will sing hari naam sukhe then i'll be happy i'll be able to sing hari naam and then what will happen aparadh ho be hat then all my aparadh all my offenses will be ceased oh gurudev please give me the strength to respect everybody so this is one thing you glorify the devotees you respect everybody okay now somebody will say everything is okay mata ji but um sometimes don't you think it's natural when i see somebody who is having more wealth than me uh you feel little envious or somebody is more beautiful somebody is more intelligent somebody is more rich somebody is more powerful somebody is more popular don't you think it's natural that some kind of a little enviousness you will feel inside your heart okay here is a solution on two levels two levels you understand this philosophically whenever you see somebody whenever you see somebody who is having more wealth than you more beauty than you more intelligence than you philosophically you have to <clears throat> convince yourself that okay he has more wealth than me but all this opulences don't give happiness material opulences simply tickle you, you know it, it it it's ticklish it just give you some superficial happiness it's like um, i suppose you tickle you tickle small children what will happen they laugh you know when you tickle but do you think laughing is happiness no if laughing was happiness then all of us could buy our own tickling machine and keep tickling ourselves whole day and keep laughing and see i'm happy because i'm laughing no at the same time i can't deny that laughter is not happiness when you laugh you feel happy so yeah when you have material opulence you are rich and you have all the opulence you are wealthy yeah it will give you some some happiness but it's superficial so whenever you see somebody's wealth you should try to philosophically convince your mind okay he has wealth but it's not about what you have how much you have will make you happy it is about what you do with what you have will make you happy okay i'll repeat again it's not about what you have how much you have will make you happy it is about what you do with what you have will make you happy so let's say um i can cook well okay this is my quality so what will make me happy is how well i can use my quality in krishna's service somebody has wealth what is what is the definition of happiness is when he can use it properly in krishna's service that will give him permanent happiness so philosophically you convince your mind wealth and opulence and material opulence does not give happiness it's not about ho- how much who has it is about what you have done 
okay you may be very intelligent but what are you doing with your intelligence are you preaching krishna consciousness or you may be very smart what are you doing with your smartness the real smartness is is he using that in krishna's service and on a practical level what to do i feel envious of this person because he has lot of wealth so what should i do so on practical level avoid over exposure to such situation which are uh, agitating your mind that's about it what happened with duryodhan when he went to indraprastha and he saw all the opulence of the pandavas what happened to him he was agitated now after the yagya was over everybody left but duryodhan stayed a couple of days more and he wanted to see more of their opulence oh they have this garden also or oh, they have this acres acres and acres of land or oh, they have this and that made him more agitated what he could have do is yagya was over he came because he has to come as a family member he could have leave immediately and not expose himself so like that on a practical platform what we can do is not expose ourselves if we understand okay this thing is agitating me stay away stay away don't expose yourself don't over expose yourself right so we we uh, heard a so we went through so many tips first is that you glorify the devotee you appreciate the devotee see basically envy is a perverted form of appreciating that person's quality so why do you feel envious of somebody he has something which you don't have frankly that means you are you are appreciating that that person has this and you don't have it but envy is a perverted form of appreciation instead of doing it like that do it openly glorify the person appreciate the person all right so glorifying appreciating the person philosophically convincing our mind that that is not the you know happiness and practically avoiding that kind of a uh, situation uh, respecting all devotees redefining happiness as of now the envy is there because we have come up with a particular definition of happiness when your happiness is defined in terms of material opulence then uh, definitely there will be envy you can't do anything about it because material opulence and material resources are limited let's say for today example um my happiness is i get seat in a particular college in a particular this now there are 10 seats and 100 people are trying to get inside definitely some will get some will not get those who will not get will feel envious of these 10 people who got inside the college so if your happiness is defined in the terms of material things definitely there will be envy but you should redefine your you should redefine happiness for yourself you should redefine so if your happiness in the is in terms of krishna consciousness then there will be no enviousness because krishna is exclusively and fully available to each and every devotee it is not like if krishna is available to me then he is not available to you he is omnipresent he is for everybody and everybody can exclusively enjoy his association our love for krishna is not like those bollywood movies where there is one heroine and two hero if this hero gets married this person will feel envious our relationship with krishna is not like that krishna is for everybody he is for me exclusively he is for you exclusively so there is no point of there is no question of feeling envious of anybody right so redefine your happiness if your happiness is in terms of krishna consciousness you will be happy okay now the enviousness may come um like as we just discussed among equal devotees you know sometimes you will feel um i i also was on the same level he was also on the same level but he just excelled and i just stayed you know so sometimes there is a kind of a you know even in your office also sometimes you know you may many times i get letters like this from devotees you know i put the same effort he also put the same effort he got promotion he salary raised he got appreciation and i didn't so then enviousness arises now that may happen in even in devotee community so what do we do so here is a little um, uh, problem with our philosophical understanding what we think is hard work is equal to result or rather action is equal to fruit but what we forget is action is not equal to fruit it is action plus deva plus kala is equal to fruit you do an action and then lord sanctions your purva janma karma and the kala which is equal to fruit 
because we don't know this definition we feel envious of others right that person got credit because he has done something in his previous life also he is rich from his previous life good karma that's about it that is why you see there may be farmers in two different places in india let's say somebody is cultivating in kanyakumari and somebody is cultivating in kashmir both must have had same acres of land same seed same uh, chemical same fertilizers same system but he got nice uh, you know harvest and he didn't why because they had rain and he didn't have rain so now rain is not under your control so that means you can put in the same efforts but krishna's sanction should be there now so your previous karma kala you have to wait for the harvest season to arrive maybe his harvest season is june your harvest season is august wait for two months you'll get your harvest why not wait have patience so when you when you know all this there is no enviousness even if somebody is more successful than you you are okay you know ah some previous baggage is carrying some previous sukriti some previous good karma so no comparison right so like that then you don't feel um envious of that devotee okay the other point is not to compare the whole point this whole thing about enviousness arises because we compare you know they are doing so good preaching you know so many bhakti rickshaws so much uh, so big temples they are doing this they are doing that no that's all right you are also doing when 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 lord's um, bridge was constructed to go to um, lanka you know from rameshwaram the hanuman uh, and the monkeys they were bringing big big mountains and squirrel was just you know getting little mud but lord ram was happy equally towards both so we do according to our capacity the mood in goloka is the cow gives milk for krishna the peacock dances for krishna's pleasure the maina sings for krishna's pleasure the swans swim for krishna's pleasure but the cow is never feeling envious why can't i dance like peacock and peacock is never feeling envious why can't i give milk like cow for krishna and they don't they don't sulk about it and they don't sit and cry about it they are happy i can sing for krishna i'll sing you can dance for krishna you dance or you can build a temple for krishna you build you can distribute books for krishna you do everybody does according to their capacity there is no comparison i'll do what is my capacity what i am good at you do what you are good at and believe me krishna will be happy krishna is is not comparing us she distributed 25 bhagavad gita look at this fellow he did one no he is happy he just seeing our endeavor what we did so there is no comparison in goloka vrindavan and there is no competition also it's not that it's not like we are in a olympic race and krishna is standing there with a gold medal in goloka and he's like hey he came first okay now you get the gold medal no even if you come last still krishna will put a gold medal on you there is no race goloka vrindavan is there and we are all on a journey maybe you'll reach faster you're more advanced than me maybe i'm a little slow i'll come later but it's all right Krishna is not giving you any marks for coming fast or coming slow. He just wants you should come back, and he is happy about it, right? The other thing, the other tip to overcome envy is: be grateful. Be grateful for whatever we have. Count your blessings. Right? Count your blessings. Don't compare with what he has or what she has. See. everybody has this plate of sunday feast okay and you have your gulab jamun and you have your uh, rasmalai and be happy now don't look at that person's plate but he has pulao and he has raita and he has pakoras oh that's all right but you also have gulab jamun and you also have rasmalai and, and maybe you also have a pakora somewhere hiding inside the puri you don't know actually your plate is so much full there must be some sweets hiding under a puri you don't know you just simply looking at that person's plate just explore your own plate remove all you know you eat in 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 you know sunday feast of iskon almost all the time it will happen there are so many varieties in your plate you won't even realize there is a pakoda hiding inside a puri you know you'll have to explore the whole plate to understand same thing krishna has given us so much we have so many qualities but we are not even realizing we just need to open up and see our whole plate and it's not about who got how much it's about what you did with what you got whatever krishna gave you the qualities see now what we are now worried is but he is doing so well okay he is doing well great but krishna 
gave you also some quality so are you doing something about it okay maybe you can't sing like that devotee okay but you can talk so are you doing something about your talking or maybe you you're not so good preacher you know preacher like him but you are a good cook are you doing something about it no i'm not interested to do anything about what i have but but he is able to preach very nicely and i'm not able to preach no forget about what he's able to do just do what you have and explore your qualities and do something about it be satisfied with what you have be satisfied okay i have this i learned this from my children you know a couple of years ago you know when my 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 kid was a teenager you know and one day he just walks in you know he's just talking about some exam results and all and i was so amazed a teenager boy and he was so appreciative about his friends you know mama he got this marks and you know mama he's such a hard worker and you know this boy he's like this and i was amazed because usually i expect oh teenagers means there will be some comparison you know i work so hard but he got better marks or she got better marks but i always observe almost all the time he's so appreciative about others or oh, he got this and he's so nice in this and he's so nice in that and i thought wow that's beautiful appreciating about others qualities being satisfied with what you have being grateful and the other important point is the kind of association you have is very important just like we we you know we quote this verse sadhu sanga sadhu sanga sarva shastra kahe eh lava matra sadhu sanga similarly there can be an opposite effect also lava matra asadhu sanga lava matra asadhu sanga will put put us in problem better to be away even if we don't have that enviousness if we do that asadhu sanga that enviousness may crop up inside us so better to be very selective you know in bengali there is one very beautiful bhajan it says jar mukhe bhai hari kotha nai tar kache tumi jeyo na जार मुख देखे भूल जाबे हरी तार मुख पाने चे ना इस डोंट गो एन एसोसिएट विथ समबडी बाय हुज एसोसिएशन यू फर्गेट कृष्णा डोंट लुक एट द फेस ऑफ द पर्सन बाय सींग हुज फेस यू फर्गेट द फेस ऑफ कृष्णा जस्ट स्टे अवे सो लाइक दैट just associate with selective devotees who are very nice एंड प्योर हार्टेड एंड सिंपल एंड द मोर यू टेक देर एसोसिएशन और यूल बिकम लाइक दैम you become like that you become you know it is it is a science you become an average of the five people that you closely associate with on a regular basis so be be careful and who are those five people whose average qualities you want to have and then be selective and associate with them and now don't ask me this question but how is that possible i have to associate with everybody i work outside i have to go yeah i'm talking about taking association i'm not talking about giving association there's a difference these people of whom you want to become like them take their association and others whom you have to deal on a day to day basis give your association don't take association okay and the most important point what to do to get over enviousness shravanam kirtanam you hear and you hear and you hear bhagavatam you hear from devotees when when we hear what happens cheto darpana marjanam the heart will become clean and the heart will become clean enviousness will also go away along with the other things that are driven out from our heart you know see you, you know in shrimad bhagavatam canto 9 chapter 11 text number 23 it's a culmination of the whole uh, lord rama's katha narration and sukadev goswami says anybody who hears this ram's katha will be free from enviousness and i thought see how this enviousness must be such a big problem that even as falashruti sukadev goswami puts it that hear krishna's katha then this enviousness will go away from your heart which is disturbing which is which is the cause of our existence in this material world that's why we are here because of enviousness so like that if you see if you simply hear from shrimad bhagavatam then the enviousness that's a falashruti that's the fruit of hearing the enviousness goes away and what happens when you continuously do shravanam and kirtanam you are conscious of krishna you are conscious of krishna and that is what is going to deliver us you know when i talk about this topic of enviousness na sometimes devotees will ask mata ji shishupal was envious of krishna and he and, and he got delivered so is it okay if i am envious of krishna no it's not okay because the problem is shishupal was envious only of krishna we are envious of everybody 
that is not going to help us if we are envious only of krishna it would have helped us but we are, it's not that we are envious of everybody see shishupal did not get delivered because he was envious of krishna shishupal got delivered because he was conscious of krishna so he was envious and because of that he was conscious of krishna so what delivered him was not his envy what delivered him was his consciousness of krishna so are you that envious of krishna that you are always conscious of krishna then you will be delivered but the problem with us is our envy is little different our envy is we are only obsessed with ourself our problem is we are self conscious conscious about ourselves and forgetful of krishna so no deliverance is going to happen we are forgetful of krishna and conscious of ourselves self conscious but shishupal was conscious of krishna because he hated krishna he was envious of krishna and so he got delivered so the whole point is the shishupal uh, leela is just to drive the point that how you know the, the potency of remembrance of krishna it's not about to highlight wow you can be envious of krishna and you'll be delivered it's not about you know focusing on the negative it's on focusing on the potency of how uh, if you are conscious of krishna jeno teno prakarena by whatever way if you are conscious of krishna you will be delivered so shavanam and kirtanam other thing what we can do is remember those personalities who are non envious if you constantly remember them what padma puran says if you keep on thinking about somebody 1% of their quality you will get so what should we, whom should we remember who are the non envious people sada goswami is rupa goswami sanatan goswami gopal bhatta goswami ragunath das goswami ragunath bhatta goswami jeeva goswami that is why what are we doing every single day we pray vande rupa sanatana why we are praying every single day when we remember them when we pray when we pray our obeisances to them then we'll become like we'll slowly get qualities like them so remember the personalities who are non envious and then one another point and with this will be culminating today's class as um when we think everybody is part and parcel of krishna then we'll not feel envious today we feel envious because we think he is different i am different but if you think everybody is part and parcel of krishna then you will not feel envious see you know when you when you put a monkey in front front of a mirror you know what the monkey will do the monkey will start hitting the mirror because the monkey will think he will not understand that it is his reflection the monkey will think oh this is some other monkey he is trying to attack me so he will he will start breaking the mirror if you ask a human being to stand in front of the mirror he won't start breaking the mirror he knows oh this is my reflection it's me only that much sense we have as a human being similarly when we see our other god brothers god sisters other people around us in the world we should think oh they are they are i am also part of krishna and they are also part of krishna so we are all part of krishna so we are all same so then you won't feel envy you won't feel envy because i have um, i have spoken on length on this topic uh, in a seminar that i gave to central new jersey city bodies so i don't want to go on and on because this is one of my favorite topic and and i i wouldn't even realize time and i'll go on and on but you want to hear more about it you can just it's called um, uh how can you become favorite devotee of krishna i think i gave them three uh parts uh, seminar and i i am still due to give a, another more seminar another more part of this uh, uh series that i am going uh, i am giving how do you become favorite devotee of krishna for central new jersey devotees and there i have spoken on length about you know this how to be a non envious you know so i was just telling them that if you become mother of everybody then you will become non envious because a mother you know just like a mother is not envious of their child as a mother if you think everybody is my family then you then you then you won't be envious of anybody you know so i was telling them that um you know if there is a affair between a between a boy and a girl okay they keep meeting secretly that's all right but the day the boy and girl decide to get married then they need to accept each other's family as they are maybe they may be having a mother who is handicapped or a sister who is unmarried or a brother who is a mentally retarded or there may be so many things but they have to accept each other if they love each other so similarly you have an affair with krishna okay but if you want to get married to krishna 
then you have to accept Krishna's family. And in Krishna's family, there are all kinds of Vaishnava. There may be an irate Vaishnava, there may be a humble Vaishnava, there may be a sweet Vaishnava, there may be an angry Vaishnava. But if you want to marry Krishna, then you understand that I love Krishna and they're all part of Krishna's family. So I have to learn to love them. I have to learn to live with them. And if you, if you, if you have that attitude in your heart, then you can love everybody. You can become Sama. Um, other day I heard a very interesting point uh, by His Holiness Mahanidhi Swami. He was saying that one way of uh, getting over this enviousness is, he said, learn to share your opulence. Whatever opulence you have, he said, share it. Share it with everybody. Then also your enviousness will go down. If you think, I have everything, he doesn't have, you know, no, you should share it. And he was he was giving very sweet example. He said, you know, I've seen that in Indian culture. He said in the West, you know, if you're traveling, let's say somebody just takes out a pack of burger, you know, he'll simply eat. And, but in, in India, he said, I'm seeing this culture even in the train. When they, they just take out some food or some cookies, the instant um, culture is they will share it with everybody. Even their unknown people, you don't even know them you will say you want some you want some you share it you know so he was saying like that if we develop this um, culture of sharing you know whatever we have we share it with others uh, that will also make us uh, non-envious and and the, and the last point is the ultimate solution the ultimate uh, solution which can make us non-envious is chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra when we chant Hare Krishna when we chant Krishna's holy name then we can become non-envious. Now, how is that? See, if you have if you have heard this Kaliya Leela, we know how the Krishna danced on the hood of Kaliya's snake. And then what happened? All the poison came out from Kaliya's mouth. Similarly, our tongue is like a snake, Kaliya. And what we want is Krishna should come and dance on it. So Krishna is not going to, you know, come in physical form, in 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 the form of his holy name. When we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, then Krishna is dancing on our Kaliya-like tongue. And when Krishna dances, what will happen? The poison of envy will come out, will vomit it out. So we have to sincerely pray to Krishna, chant and pray to Krishna, Oh my dear Lord, please dance on my tongue. Remove this poison of envy. envy. Please give me shelter. Please make me a good devotee. Please make me the way you want me to. You know, please help me to uh, fight over this anarthas and uh, um, uh, sincerely uh, uh, love you, worship you, uh, serve you with a pure heart. So with this... I'll end it here. Sorry for a very, very long session. But the topic is like that. I wouldn't be able to do justice to that, you know, if I would have um, uh, make it brief. So with this, um, I pray to Lord Shri Shiradha Damodhar and Jagannath Baladeh Subhadra Maharani, all of us, you, me, and everybody out there, you know, that he blesses all of us and someday um, we can remove this um, anarthas from our heart and uh, serve him, uh, serve him uh, pure-heartedly as he wants us to. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> what is the difference between envious and jealousy? Hmm. Envy in envy there is enmity for the person, in jealousy there may not be enmity. Yeah. When you feel that somebody is envious of you, then you feel like giving up the service. Maybe instead of giving up the service, you can make the person partner in your service. If you see that person is envious of you, then you make the person partner in your service and try to share credit and... Uh, you know, take guidance, that way the person will feel comfortable. 
So sometimes if, you know, you're doing well and somebody is envious of it and you, you, you're you having that feeling, you know. So instead of giving up this service, maybe you can make the person partner in your service. You give credit or take guidance and take a humble position. Maybe that person will change over the period of time. So instead of running away from the problem, maybe you can try and sort it out. Almost all the time when you take up a humble position, um, uh, you, you, you'll always see there will be a change in the in the other person. Sometimes the enviousness arise, arises maybe out of our body language also. But instead of running away, if we can try and bring change in ourselves, which will... See, I'm not saying that it's always, uh, you know, we who needs to make a, make a change somewhere and that may have an effect on the other person. It may or it may not have. Even if you try to change your behavior, the person may not change. But it's well worth the trying then to leave serving uh, Krishna, whatever you are serving, so you can continue. If you are happy with your service, you are enjoying to do it, just go ahead and do it. But try and take a humbler position. We see even in that um, pastime of, you know, the four Kumaras going to Vaikuntha. And we see how when Krishna, when Lord Vishnu takes up a humbler position, asking forgiveness, and immediately these people become so embarrassed. Are why did we show anger? So it's something like that, you know, with the devotees also. If you just take a humble position, you, no matter how hard-hearted the other person may, they'll almost all the time, you know, they may melt away. So you can try doing that, you know. Just be... Just take a humble position, take guidance from them, you know. Okay, it's, it's okay how I'm doing, shall I do it this way, shall I do that? Try and share credit, make them partner in your service. So like that. You know. Person becomes envious when they feel they, they can't reach us or they feel, like, like I was just saying, what Mahanidhi Swami said, share, share. When you share your credit with everybody, the, when you share your credit with everybody, there are less chances of person becoming envious. And again, I'm just making a general statement. I don't know specifically what may be the reason of why enviousness is coming, but you can check for yourself why it's arising and what you can do about it. Can you go again for the question? Okay, why? Okay, why do we say that Shishupal was envious of Krishna? Because Shishupal wanted to have, because Shishupal wanted to have everything for himself. He was upset that how come Krishna gets to be so famous? How come Krishna gets Rukmini? How come Krishna looks so effulgent? How come Krishna gets Agra Puja? Krishna got Agra Puja in the, in the fire sacrifice conducted by Yudhishthira. That made Shishupal envious. Krishna got married to Rukmini, whom he was supposed to get married. So that made Shishupal envious. Krishna was very popular and appreciated by everybody. And that made him envious because he wanted to be there. So yeah, enviousness, basic, the feeling is a longing to have everything for oneself or longing to have something that somebody else has. You want to be like him, want to look like him, you want to, you want to have wealth like him, you want to be you know, rich like him, you want to be popular like him, you want to be known like him. So like that, that's a longing. Somebody has, has something and you want it for yourself. That is enviousness. Right. So that's what the, yeah, so Shishupal was envious of Krishna. Thank you, Manaji. Thank you so much, Mataji. Mataji, I have a question, Mataji. Uh, so, uh, sometimes it happens like uh, when I am in the middle of the night, I feel like I am in the middle of the night. If the devotees say, I am better, I can do better, so how should we react? <clears throat> when somebody says, I am better, how should we react? Yeah, I can do better. Uh, yeah. Great. If somebody says they can do better, then yeah, we can humbly hear from them how they, they can do it better and we learn from them. 
no harm in lending our ears and uh, listening how i'm sure everybody has some way of doing it even if even if we think in our heart that maybe we are doing the best there always we can learn something from others and if somebody you know comes out there right and tells you look i can do better so that's great opportunity actually and yes you can you can learn just take an humble position and you learn you learn from them see it's like this if the person person is actually capable and is uh, his his he or she is going to teach you something which you don't know great and let's say if that's not the case and you know you know that they don't know any you know in the heart of your heart that oh they're just saying but it's not but even still if you give them the chance and if that's making them happy then that, that should make you happy too because just now i told you that we need to become mothers if we become mother then uh, the whole world we can see with a different perspective see let's say your daughter or your son comes and tells you mama you made this curry today but i think i can make it better and i'm sure you'll not feel bad about it you laugh it off okay great you can do better acha okay fine you do it because you know oh come on you know little, little children they'll say something so like that if they're genuinely better than you great you got somebody to help you and do better if they're not and you know that so that's all right you just take it like a okay fine come on okay okay tell me how you do okay tell me how do we do it and you just listen you know just like we de- deal with little kids you know and you just uh, humbly look at them and then you appreciate oh yeah that was nice you know see that way you're making a day right you're making somebody's day so why not take that opportunity if your smile and appreciation is going to make somebody happy then just do it yeah great mother ji you did good job that was nice you just say that and they'll feel happy so if you can learn learn it even if it's not helping you if it's making them smile do it yeah thank you next there's there's still some still questions are there yeah they're just coming in like that how many more okay okay we if yeah i mean i can i, I can answer like this in a line then it's okay another four questions we can take yeah okay. <clears throat> um, in your experience what is the best way to correct if correction is needed <clears throat> okay your question is what is the best way to correct somebody if correction is required now again this is on different levels are you talking about correcting some superior are you talking about correcting somebody is on your level or are you trying to correct somebody who is a uh, junior or new in krishna, in krishna consciousness now there are various way with different people you will deal it deal in a different way so the <clears throat> when you're trying to correct somebody who is a junior also the whole point is if you have invested enough in somebody's krishna consciousness then they will take your correction very positively for example if you are a leader a temple leader and you haven't invested on their uh, journey in krishna consciousness but then you're always there to correct them definitely they'll not appreciate that see in their journey in pursuing krishna consciousness they're alone but as soon as they do a mistake you are there to correct them they're not going to enjoy that but if they see that you are genuinely you know you have participated in their journey you were there with them by you know by their side holding their hand guided them then they they really don't mind you know they really take it so positively when you correct them so they feel happy as far as the people on your own level is uh, concerned uh, before you uh, correct you you appreciate you know before you correct you appreciate you give lot of lots of um, respect and with lot of affection and then you know you very subtly you correct and then again it depends upon what kind of people you are dealing with sometimes some people are so open and they wouldn't mind so you be sensitive with whom you are do- dealing and you know how much you can no you know their mentalities you know if they are how sensitive or they are so according to that you correct with the seniors unless and until it's in your jurisdiction and something you really need to do better to stay away because um 
Vaishnavir Kriya Mudra, Vigne Nabuja, you don't know, even great scholars, great people also cannot understand why the Vaishnava behaves in a certain way or does not behave in a certain way. It's so difficult to understand. So the whole point is better to give a benefit of doubt all the time, even before you, you know, take any step to correct anybody for that matter, especially the seniors, because sometimes you are think, seeing things from your side of the table and maybe from his side of the table, things may be different. Also, sometimes there may be insufficient data. What you know about a particular incident, situation, may be insufficient data. You know just a little bit, but there may be a whole picture. Better to, be, uh, better to avoid, unless and until it's something which is really disturbing you and it's really going to harm the temple or harm your Krishna consciousness or harm others' Krishna consciousness. And you have to go out there as a savior and you feel the necessity without you, nobody else is going to do it, then you go ahead. But mostly it's better to avoid. and um, Or otherwise, sometimes you can do it via somebody instead of you going all out, you know, out front. You just share it with somebody or share it with your mentor or share it with somebody whom you are comfortable and take guidance. How should I approach? What should I do? This is what has happened. And then, you know, uh, very, um, <clears throat> don't do it like, you know, uh, on a war footing, you know, pause, think and do it. For that matter, anything in our life, when we press a pause button and everything we do, our reaction responses is after the pause button, we do it better. When we are, um, we simply act to our impulse immediately, something, you know, I felt like that, let me go and tell him. You'll almost end up doing something wrong. Even like, you know, you, you, you're writing a mail to somebody, you, you, you're sending some correction to somebody. Write it and sleep over it, you know, wait for 24 hours if it's not urgent and then again read it. Because sometimes, you know, the modes of nature act on us. Sometimes we are in sattvic mode, sometimes in rajasic, sometimes in tamasic and we just act according to those um, modes. So we should be careful, you know, what mode we are, what how we will react so we can pause and and even if you want to correct why you know just just uh, just repeat the script you know is it okay what i'm doing is it correct is it required you know think 10 times take guidance from others and then go about it because we have to be so careful about this vaishnava prad it'll it'll put it'll put us in trouble so better to be slow about it you know krishna is there goloka vrindavan is there everything is happening nothing is you know there's not going to be any big calamity if you don't change or correct that person take your own time and um, do it carefully so respectfully you know always uh, do it it should not be artificial our intention should be correct that's very important you know sometimes um, you know, devotees, externally the body language may be very respectful. They will they will do shakshat, dandavat, pranam and please accept my... They'll say everything and then they, they'll say something which is so hurting to the other person. So we have to be so careful, you know. We shouldn't be like, you know, with our one word just hurt ten hearts and, you know. Because what Skanda Puran says that even when you disrespect a devotee, it's aparad when you... You know, it's like killing somebody, especially the, those who are respected. You know, we have to be so careful in our choice of words. What we say shouldn't um, shouldn't hurt anybody. That has to be, we have to be very... Sometimes, you know, you physically hit somebody after a few days, you know, the pain goes away. But when you, when you say something, you can't take back your words. And sometimes they just stay with them forever. So very important is your intention. Of course, intention and presentation. Usually people give 90% marks to your presentation and 10% to your intention. Their whole thing is how did you present is very important, you know, very arrogant and, you know, and 10% is your intention. But Krishna knows our intention. So intention also should be pure, you know. We really wanted to make this correction genuinely because we feel the necessity or we just want to show our superiority that I know better. So check your intention before you go ahead to make that correction. Yeah, it's a long topic. We can go on and on, but I think I hope this helps you. Okay, so you, your question is that I get inspired when I hear the class, but again, we come back to square A. So why this happens? 
So this happens almost all the time. It's not only this, any, any, anything that you do, we get inspired, but that inspiration to stay for, uh, stay stronger and longer, you will have to even create the environment to facilitate that inspiration to grow in your life. So yeah, you may be inspired by something, but you have to even create the environment to, to facilitate the growth. That means... Today I have decided, after this class, I don't want to be envious of anybody. I want to be a humble and nice Vaishnava. So yeah, so how do I grow that 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 inspiration has, which has now, just now come into my heart, is I nourish it. So that means I, it's not stopping that I heard the class today. I'll hear it again and I'll hear it again and I'll hear some more classes and I'll do more Shravanam and more Kirtanam and slowly I will improve. So sometimes certain classes which you have in, which which have inspired you, you can always keep them, you know, like your capsule. And then after sometimes when you feel dull again, you just hear the same class again and then you hear the same class again and then that will again inspire you or related classes. So the whole point is, um, you know, the Bhakti Lata Beej, even in our Krishna consciousness, that that has been given freely to us, but to nourish it is our job. So yeah, sometimes we get uh, inspired, but we'll have to nourish it. See, you, you when you are in the deep dark forest, you may somehow work hard, try and get some twigs together and light it, light up, you know, some fire. That was that was difficult by itself, but what will be more difficult is to continue the fire. You have to go on collecting twigs, go on collecting twigs and make sure that the fire is lit on and doesn't get extinguished. Same thing happens with our um, spiritual life also. We all get inspired very quickly and very easily. Doesn't take much endeavor. One hour class and we will be on our high, but to keep the high stronger and longer we have to facilitate it and that facilitation is the right association whether vani or vapu whether you hear classes or associate with devotees who have that same uh, mentality but that is required otherwise uh, it will become like our new year resolution by the second week of january it's all gone to the trash it will happen like that so and don't have to feel bad about it. I think that's uh, that's a story of everybody's life. We all get inspired by something and then we'll get again, you know, it's not about, um, uh, you know, why this is happening. It'll happen, but again, get up. And then again, it'll happen and again, get up. And it's a part of life. The only thing is, if you keep on doing it regularly, the frequency of falling down will reduce. Initially, maybe... Every two two days you used to get angry and again envious. But if you keep on hearing, now instead of two days, every two months you will have that, you know, uh, you know, you'll have that anger or enviousness. Then again, every two years, then it will become every 10 years like that. Slowly the in the, in the graph, the frequency will reduce. It, I'm not saying it will immediately diminish, but frequency will be reduced. And that's a good, that's a good uh, sign and we should be happy about it. And slowly it will get better. <clears throat> the extension of the collection question that was there earlier, um, someone's asking that if I have to correct my husband or a senior member of the family, uh, what is the, the right way to do that? Because these are my superiors, especially in the family. Okay, so you're saying that if you have to correct your husband or correct your senior family members how do you go about it yeah so just i just i, I it's the same answer just take an um, humble position and um, before correcting make sure you have done your job properly you have served them enough you know before you try and um, give them correction hmm we need to check ourselves before we do that, you know, before we try to correct somebody. There may be so many things that we are going, uh, we are going wrong, you know. See, yeah, sometimes I make the children do this exercise, you know, in my school. I just tell them that sit and write down all the good qualities that you want to see in your best friend. And you, you should see the the enthusiasm with which they will write, you know, they'll go on writing. He should be honest and he should be, he should keep all my secrets and he should be friendly and, and they'll write and they'll write and they'll be so happy and they'll run to me. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And you'll see there'll be 15, 20, you know, qualities they want to see in their best friend. And then I tell them, okay, now check if you have these qualities in yourself, 
that is a time they'll be like oh in myself ah so in, in we don't have those qualities in ourselves and we almost all all the time want to see that qualities in others so like this we should be very careful when we are trying to correct others like you know do i have these problems first we check ourselves before it's like we help ourselves before trying to help others we put our oxygen mask before trying to put mask on others is what they train us in the in the plane so like that you know and if you really think that you know you're doing okay and you need to help that person see, basically correction is for what you want to help the person that's the whole intention so you genuinely feel that you need to help or correct the person then uh, you serve the person you know serve the person especially because they are elders you serve them very nicely and then uh, do it very uh, subtly very subtly you should uh, you should do it uh, and um, they should not feel offended it's very important no unless and until i know a specific you know what i wouldn't be like give you the details but i can just tell you the principle make sure you approach humbly make sure it's right make sure your intention is right and make sure what correction you're giving is actually required it's not something which you have just imagined you know 80% of the time it will be something like that you don't even know the other side of the story and you you know you run in to give some some correction so we have to be careful before we tread into that think 100 times pause and then um, and then go ahead okay Mother ji what is your what is your name Shrinita What is that Shrinita Shrinita Now I have a question because I is my personal question how do you how do you know that somebody is envious of you No because um, I'm really I, I mean I genuinely have this question because I don't know many times people ask me they are envious this is person is envious of me but I really wonder how do they even realize that somebody is envious because I don't know I I never came across somebody who is envious of me and that's why I'm not able to get that experience you know because unless you have that experience you cannot answer the question properly but in my life I never had that experience you know like how do you understand that this person is envious of you and this question is in my mind from long time and i don't know whom to ask like how do i know this person is envious because i, I didn't find anybody like that you know how do you know like tell me specifically so that i can help you like how do you know that person is envious of you <clears throat> if if the enviousness is only expressed by their body language and not by any words then um, you also give them some good look back you know they just looking at you with enviousness is what you feel and you just give them a good look back i don't know somebody is fighting with looks you fight with look somebody fight with word you fight with words right so if you think that the the look of it is feel you makes you feel that they are envious so okay you just give them a good look back you know if they are envious you just smile and you be more humble and you try to be more friendly and nice and um, maybe they'll just uh, they'll give up that look now why i'm telling you this is because sometimes i feel maybe we just misunderstand people you know like you may just feel this person is giving you may just feel that this person is envious of you that may not be the question so i'll tell you i'll give you one example you know in india cricket is very popular sport everybody they love cricket and now of course there are cell phones and uh, you know that you can just watch live but you know 
many years ago there was this radio you know they'll just plug the radio or the walkman and it's ear plug you know and they're hearing the cricket commentary four six run out so many overs left you know and these youngsters you know either you see them in the bus or you see them in the road you know sometimes they're just hearing the cricket cricket commentary and they will start behaving as if they are the baller you know while hearing they will do like this you know and somebody is walking they'll be like oh, are you trying to hit me or something but actually they're not trying to hit you that commentary is going on and he's just making all that actions you know he'll do like this as if he's batting as if he's bowling all kinds of actions he will do if you are not from india and you don't know about the sport cricket you will end up thinking he's mad fellow or what you know trying to hit but because you know you know it's is harmless boy just enjoying his cricket but the actions are like that so sometimes we may assume somebody is envious of us because he's giving us that look but it may not be true maybe something else is going on in their mind at that particular time maybe you just assuming it to be like that you know see like look, look let's say i did something very nice maybe i made very beautiful dt dress and i'm really expecting everybody to appreciate and i see this one devotee is having a grumpy face and he doesn't have any appreciation and i may think he's envious but maybe it's not like that maybe he just put a little more salt in his pasta today morning and he's upset about that or maybe he had some fighting with her has her wife or husband or maybe he had some other issue at the office but that body language we feel me me towards me maybe because i you know i'm just and i'm not saying you are wrong you may be right whatever you are feeling i'm sure it's a genuine feeling but i'm just trying to tell you to look for options you know give benefit of doubt sometimes you know also sometimes you know what happens people put us in a certain frame you know you know frame you put a photo in a frame you the photo is like this but you put in a in a in a glass frame it looks different the same photo you put in a wooden frame it looks different sometimes people put us in different frame they have some thinking about us this mata ji is very egoistic this mata ji is like this she's always like that she's all, like that they have put us in a certain frame it's not their mistake by mistake they have put us in a wrong frame somehow we just need to come out of that frame and and show them no we we not like that you, you know I'm, i'm not like that you just have to take that out so so give benefit of doubt and uh, and if you specifically feel that that person or mata ji or somebody or whoever is um, envious um, try to be friends and i think communication is the key sometimes we just over interpret and we give translation and purport to everybody's behavior you know we are expert commentators you know somebody looks like this and we have a whole translation with purport you know about them and their behavior so sometimes we just give benefit of doubt you know just talk to them and be friendly and maybe sometimes maybe they are feeling we are not friendly maybe they think oh she's so egoistic sometimes we think and actually there is nothing between the both both are actually nice but just misunderstanding each other because of lack of communication so like that and i mean i can go on but like certain tips just communicate talk to them uh, give them benefit of doubt and you know uh, try to come out of that frame which they have put you in so like that you know i just hope this helps you mata ji Okay Ramchandra Prabhu is the last question now uh, Yes I'm just you okay. need to talk. No no it's a, it's just that I need to run for a meeting yeah yeah Last question Thank you Mm I'm not so clear about your question what I understand is that you said what if the deities are real It's not about what if the deities are real deities are real there is no question about they being real or not being real the whole point is that what i was trying to say is because they don't come out and talk like we talk like normal people so we feel very comfortable because the deities are not going to criticize us unlike the devotees today i don't do my chanting properly then radha damodar doesn't humiliate me in front of everybody and says oh, no she has not done her chanting properly but devotees are very kind so they will tell hey you were drowsing you know when you were you, you were you, when you're doing your japa so they will correct so because they correct 
we don't like them because they correct they they show you the real picture they show you the mirror hey look this is how you look but with the deities it's not like that krishna is very kind you know whether you chant you don't chant he's always there with his smile and flute and so he has sent his representatives in the form of his devotees to help us to connect to him but he is very kind he wouldn't that is why you see in shrimad bhagavatam whether it is prahlad or dhruva or ambarish or just about any devotees when they saw lord mukha mukhi face to face the only thing they ask is can we get association of devotees perpetually they never ask the lord can i have your association perpetually they said we want to have devotee association because there are chances that even in in the presence of the lord you may forget lord you know it, it it happens but in the presence of devotees you can never forget lord because what happens when you are with devotees bodayante parasparam kathayantascha maam nityam when you are with devotees you are talking about krishna speaking about krishna thinking about krishna and you will never forget krishna but when you are in front of krishna you never sure see what happens you know you know you you see you just stand in front of krishna you are right in front of the deities in darshanarthi there always chances where you will think you know okay my sari is looking okay oh what is her sari what happened this is so many things but when you are hearing katha nothing you are thinking you are so engrossed in hearing so yeah devotees association is so powerful you know they just take your mind and put it on krishna's lotus feet so i didn't mean any offense by saying that you know i the did i i did is are real what i'm just trying to say is because they're not talking and they're not pointing us out out of our mistakes uh, we are very comfortable but if they start pointing out imagine you know you just go in guru puja and you putting flower on prabhupad and prabhupad actually starts speaking to you and tell you you know this is what you did and that's what you did then then we have to that's a real test we'll see we'll understand how comfortable we are but that's a human psychology we don't like corrections we don't want people to correct we just want that's another test we just feel we are doing great and we are always all the time correct and we want to correct others you know that was one thing and i didn't understand your first question what was that no just i got the the nice first one was just the command that okay 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 thank you prabhu i hope this helped helped you yeah thank you hi krishna Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Krishna. Sab Krishna 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 lage. Sab Krishna